Lycodium. Lycodium is a terrestrial climbing fern of immense ecological importance. This is because of the fact that it is a ruderal species and in fact it is one of the pioneer species in an, any disturbed habitat. So this type of species are very invasive and noxious weed and in fact they are responsible for endangerment of native flora when introduced to any non-native place. Hello friends, I am Ayantika and in this video I am going to discuss about this climbing fern Ligodium, the overview, morphology, anatomy of this uh, fern, climbing fern Ligodium, fossil forms, its ecological and economic importance and the control measures of Ligodium. In the next part of the video, I will be discussing about reproduction and life cycle of Ligodium. So, without any further delay, let's start the video. Taxonomic position. Ligodium belongs to division Polypodiophyta, class Polypodiopsida. These are basically includes uh, the fern. They uh, signify that these are the fern uh, categories and uh, order Schizales. Order Schizales is uh, includes those ferns that have a dimorphic leaf, which means that one uh, leaf will be uh, sterile, another type of leaf will be fertile. This is a this uh, diagram shows the fertile leaves of. Um, uh, Ligodium where we see that the terminal region it is highly uh, lobed and in uh, each of these lobes we have two uh, rows of uh, sporangia um, and uh, on either side of the any vein and so these are basically schizales includes those uh, ferns that have dimorphic leaf. And uh, this order Schizales has got three families of which Ligo DAC um, and uh, another uh, two families are Anemiaceae and uh, Schizaceae. And this Ligo DAC includes uh, our, fa our fern Ligodium. So taxonomic position is very important in any question. Uh, for example, if they are asking for the reproductive system as well as for the life cycle, uh, this type of uh, all any type of questions you should always be writing the taxonomic position of uh, the plant you are describing so uh, common name is climbing fern for example uh, ligodium japonica it is called japanese climbing fern like this way uh, other type of uh, uh, ligodium species are named after uh, i have a common name of climbing fern and name after the uh, place of origin so 45 species of fern fa of ligodium found so far and these are the name of the global species uh, mostly studied and ligodium palmatum it is a very important because it is becoming endangered this is native to uh, northern america but uh, due to habitat loss due to extensive uh, increase in the extensive um, cultivation of the land uh, this uh, ligodium palmatum is losing its uh, habitat and also there is um, infestation of ligodium japonicum and ligodium microphyllum in uh, these uh, in uh, north american region so as a result of this competitive exclusion and habitat loss uh, this uh, ligodium palmatum is becoming endangered indian species are ligodium hazaricum ligodium flexiosum and uh, in fact this hazaricum is found in the western himalayan region flex so some is found in the entire Himalayan region as well as the central plains of India and in habit it is basically a climbing fern and it is perennial under uh, tropical condition but under the, the temperate region uh, also it is uh, cold hardy so um, it survives as uh, a deciduous uh, fern 
where the leaf fall at a cold temperature and it is survived by only the rhizome which is filled with the starch grain and they lie underground so many cold um, this ligodium palmatum is a very cold hardy uh, species and in fact um, uh, this can be found uh, in uh, in the area in the north uh, of uh, United States of America also you can find this uh, palmatum as well as in the southern region till the Florida also we can find this La Ligodium palmatum but this is a very special species that despite being cold hardy uh, this is not that much invasive as other species of Ligodium so this species has become endangered and so habit is that it is either scrambling or climbing so uh, it, it uh, scrambles it grows layer over layer over itself or other sharps or if it gets a cl tree close by then it climbs to great height that is it can even climb from 15 to even 90 feet but it uh, not only depend upon the tree nearby but also it depend upon the species of ligodium some species uh, does not uh, attain much height but few species attain height also so that depend upon species growth rate is very high that is 6.5 centimeter per day so habit is that it as it is a fern it will be naturally preferring wetland swampy condition and um, it requires very high amount of sunlight and it can grow in any type of soil sandy loamy alkaline acidic but in acidic soil we know that uh, in acidic soil certain minerals like aluminium copper iron manganese they become very easily available as because these elements like copper aluminium iron and manganese they become available they replace other macro and micro elements in the body of plant they make those uh, plan, those uh, other macro micro elements unavailable so a deficiency of this uh, elements occur in the body of the plants so under acidic condition there is just not only toxicity of aluminium copper iron and manganese but also there is deficiency of other macro and micro element for this reason though the ligodium is um, growing in acidic condition but those um, ligodium that grow in acidic condition have a much stunted growth due to acidic condition and a uh, global distribution is that it is found a uh, cosmopolitan pan tropical in the that is mostly in the found in the tropical region but few temperate region also found and in india it is found both in tropical as well as in very alpine condition uh, in uh, the himalayan region it is found also in the it is found in the uh, much uh, high temperature region like bengal Tamil Nadu, Kerala and um, especially this Ligodium flexosum it can be found in the mountainous region as well as in the um, uh, central region that is in Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh and uh, these regions we see and also in the Bilaspur uh, this region that is in the Chotanagpur plateau region so in the central part of India uh, also in the southern part like Tamil Nadu, Kerala, wherever there is high moisture, those About areas, those uh, small here pockets, we see, uh, uh, we find that, uh, uh, this ligodium. ligodium it is found in America, in America, North America, South America, Central, even the Central America, that is in the Caribbean and this the species. It is also found in Asia. It is also found in Australia and even in New Zealand area so and even also in the Polynesia region also we are finding this uh, various species of Ligodium then about the external morphology plant body is divided into um, stem leaf and root so this is the stem this is the creeping rhizome we see 
and it can also be climbing but the rhizome if creeping or climbing whatever be it it is actually it has got a very uh, good um, covering of uh, hair brown color hair uh, uh, throughout the entire surface and very thick hair it protects mechanical protection uh, and uh, uh, despite having hair it does not have any scales the rhizome do not have any scales so rhizome it is a creeping or ascending either it can be uh, creeping or ascending and it is very strong and vary because um, it is sometime it is also climbing so this type of rhizome is it is branched and branching is dichotomous but sometime we uh, find that the dichotomy is unequal dichotomy and uh, from this uh, stem or the rhizome on the upper surface fronds are born and on the lower surface we see the roots and the roots they arise opposite point to uh, from where the fronds arise and the root branches they appear to be very bulbous in structure and the rhizome uh, rhizome it uh, it is uh, always covered with uh, hair and uh, the color of hair is brownish and uh, rhizome is also one of the method of perination that is it uh, survives at cold temperature uh, when the rest of the body part dies so rhizome apart from being perination it also one of the method of propagation very um, uh, very uh, widely used method of propagation in this plant where any fragmentation in the rhizome and in depending plant upon a uh, species uh, the ligodium plant can be uh, can have a frond or leaf uh, that is either pinnately or palmately lobed uh, ligodium palmatum has got a palmately lobed body uh, sorry palmately uh, lobed uh, front that is a leaf that i have put the picture in the next slide but now let's talk about the pinnately compound leaf that is found in other species of ligodium where uh, the leaf uh, here this is a example of pinnately compound leaf where each of these uh, each of this pinna we see that there uh, the pinna is unequally um, dichotomously branched this is the this is one of the lobe and this is the other lobe and we see that this is an unequal dichotomy and it is repeatedly um, branched uh, uh, palmately branched and this reaches this uh, the stalk region this reaches is um, covered with hair and uh, the, in fact the primary reaches divided into secondary reaches and all the reaches they are covered by um, hair and in fact uh, the uh, the surface of the leaf the surface of the leaf is also covered by curled hair so entire leaf and the reaches they are pubescent the reaches of the the reaches of this uh, plant um, ligodium is very uh, strong and very in fact this reaches is strong and so it is used as a climbing uh, it is a leaf twiner it is uh, used the entire leaf is used in the climbing uh, of uh, the plant to higher region and this photo i have been taking from uh, this research paper so uh, this was all about the normal leaf we know that uh, the ligodium is a dimorphic front where uh, the leaves two type of leaves are found this is the uh, this is the pina this is the leaf which is sterile leaf it does not have sporangia and i'll be discussing the fertile leaf in the next uh, uh, slide this is the so uh, this is the picture where uh, the fertile uh, leaf looks like and this is the picture of uh, ligodium palmatum uh, which has got a palmately uh, compound leaf and you see uh, the here the picture it is a palmately compound leaf otherwise all other species of ligodium has a pinnate compound leaf and uh, where we see that this is this is the sterile leaf and this is the fertile leaf 
so uh, though this uh, both leaves looks uh, uh, same size but actually this uh, sterile leaf is much larger than the fertile leaf and the sterile leaf also has got a very smooth uh, margin or very finely dented um, uh, denticulate margin but on the other hand this uh, fertile uh, leaf they have got a margin that is lobed and in each lobe we see that uh, say for example this is the lobe so in each lobe on the either side of the mid vein are born uh, sporangia in cluster that is uh, on a, if this is the mid vein then the uh, all the sporangia they are born on either side of the uh, mid rib and in a row if we if you just uh, zoom this picture this type uh, in each uh, of this say for example this uh, this entire and uh, this is the the each of this lobe i have drawn here and also when i'll discuss the uh, sporangia in detail i will be showing you the much enlarged picture anyway you can also zoom, zoom this uh, and uh, this entire uh, margin region this margin region has uh, is the sporangial region on either side of this uh, um, your main vein we have uh, two rows of sp uh, sporangia which contains the spore so each of this fertile pinna uh, they can contain as much as 2800 uh, 28000 to even 15000 spores so uh, all this sporangias region it is found in the uh, marginal um, region of the fertile pinna so uh, the surface of the fertile pinna as well as sterile pinna is either pubescent Anatomy or it can be glabrous so uh, this uh, picture this was about the front research kit you can also search it in uh, google scholar so this picture it it is um, the transverse section of ligodium hazaricum where we will be first seeing the ratches that is the diagram a is the ratches where we see that uh, the ratches has got a single layer of epidermis and a three to six cell layered hypodermis next to the epidermis and the central it has got a massive uh, stellar region it has got a massive stellar region where it is proto steely and uh, the steely stellar region is uh, completely covered by the endodermis and pericycle so this is the ratches that is the um, petiolar portion uh, that is uh, we find in angiospermic plant so in uh, this form those portion is called the ratches which contains the mid vein uh, region and uh, so this diagram A is the ratchets. Now we move to the next diagram that is the diagram B which is that of the stem. Stem has also got a very um, circular outline and it has got a single layer of epidermis and a massive, massive cortex which is again differentiated into outer uh, pale uh, colored parenchyma and inner uh, dark colored parenchyma so based on the uh, coloration is based mainly uh, due to the function that is the outer cortex is uh, chlorophyllous and the inner cortex is more of uh, uh, storage in function and uh, next to the cortex we find that uh, there is endodermis and pericycle encircling a central stele the this is the stellar region where we see the dark colors uh, are the xylem and uh, surrounding the xylem is the phloem region and this uh, 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 this diagram is that of the stem next we see the root this diagram that is uh, the c 
this is the root diagram and uh, it has got a single layered uh, single layered epidermis which is not that much clear because the epidermis is damaged and at uh, most of the sites we uh, see that the epidermis has eroded and uh, the root uh, next to the epidermis is few layered cortex and in this cortical region in this cortical region which is very important because cortical region has been found to contain various uh, species of mycorrhizal fungi and uh, the function of this uh, mycorrhizal fungi is uh, still um, under uh, research whether it has got a symbiotic relation or not but they have been um, infested with the cortex infested with fungi inner to the cortex in the root we have endodermis and pericycle uh, encircling a uh, steel stellar region xylem and the phloem so this was all about the uh, ratches the stem and the root and uh, in fact these these are the picture of the sporangium how the sporangium looks and this is uh, the picture of a single spore how does it look and uh, if you want to uh, know about the de detail of the sporangial structure and the spore structure i have uh, made the video on uh, the reproduction where i have detailed a uh, discussion about the this, fossil uh, forms in uh, lycodium and the sporangia most of these fossils they belong to this class uh, schizales so they are close to lycodium uh um, these we see most of the species like for example cluchia and uh, stachypteris and um, uh, most of the species they belong to this jurassic period and we also find that they are also found in the cretaceous period as many uh, cretaceous period as well as triassic as well as very new that is the eocene period so these are the species and these are the um uh, these are the uh, fossil uh, pic photo of the fossils that we see and these fossils are found throughout the world and also uh, mostly it is found st starting from uh, jurassic and ending in the eocene so we see Uh, here this is a geographical time scale and we see the fossils they uh, start from triassic most of the fossils are found in the jurassic and the cretaceous these uh, these two period most of the fossils are obtained and also uh, we can see fossil till this eocene period uh, till the this uh, eocene period uh, till this eocene period we see uh, fossils of various members of uh, various uh, species close to uh, lycodium that is those belonging to the schizales order global distribution of fossil forms this fossil forms that we discuss are uh, mostly they belong to the ordered schizales so it is quite close to uh, lycodium and it can be found in north america especially species like cluchia and uh, schizopsis and cluchiopteris as well as lupuni lulus all these species that i have mentioned in uh, the uh, next to next slide that is a previous uh, next slide and these uh, species i have uh, talked about in those slides so they are found in north america uh, fossils are also found in the moscow region that is the stachypteris not here but uh, here moscow region uh, so stachypteris is found here also we have found um, uh, in the european region also we have found extensive fossil uh, rec uh, record of stachypteris so this is about the global distribution of fossils found uh, though the uh, this fossils has been found here it does not mean that uh, other regions won't contain fossils but they haven't been yet discovered 
and so uh, only um, northern south america northern central america europe and um, asia this region we have found um, uh, fossils and uh, especially uh, this united uh, kingdom region has got many fossils of uh, ligodium as well as leupuni lula about the ecological importance uh, some species of ligodium they are very uh, much highly invasive and uh, they usually grow they have a high growth rate so they grow over the surrounding vegetation whether sharp or even over itself and also it can climb high trees and as a result they they um, smother the native plant also rob the sur native uh, surrounding plants of the sunlight so in um, by doing all this it usually causes a uh, reduction in the diversity a red endangerment of the surrounding plants and uh, apart from that it is also a very good ruderals indicator after any disturbance it is the pioneer species to um, occur in case of a disturbance and uh, as because um, this is ruderal and uh, so it is a pioneer species in a disturbance area and also it is a very high sunlight demanding species so this type of uh, species that is ligodium species all the species of ligodium they are not found in a uh, in a late succession uh, forest they are not found because those species that are found in the late succession forest are shade tolerant which ligodium is not so this is the ecological another most ecolo important fa factor is that in case of a fire fire um, uh, in case of a forest fire it uh, this um, uh, entire uh, we see that uh, the uh, the ligodium it climbs up the trees so if there is for fire at the ground level so these ligodium uh, they uh, that climb up the forest uh, tree they act as a ladder for the fire also to reach the canopy and any plant they can sometime tolerate the ground fire but um, the canopy fire is much more dangerous so uh, ligodium helps the fire to reach the canopy of the tree top of the tree and then the entire plant is scorched and uh, the plant uh, dies so this is a uh, the ligodium plays a very important in those ecosystem that is driven by this fire so these are the three uh, most eco important ecological factor apart from that as because it is a uh, very highly invasive uh, uh, genus so uh, in the swampy area and in the open forest area this um, this invades and if it is a plantation area and a rice field then it causes huge economic loss also in plantation area that is a rubber plantation tea plantation areas of the southeast asia we find ligodium is a very common weed in the plantation area and in fact it causes huge economic loss also also in the paddy field so uh, this is a very good uh, this is a very bad um, weed uh, very uh, then uh, it is one of the main reason that uh, this is also very um, Uh, highly invasive is that it is not uh, subjected to much herbivory though uh, this is because of the fact that the leaves of this ligodium they contain several tannins and cyanogenic glycosides these uh, secondary metabolites that are present in the leaf make uh, them unpalatable and dangerous for the insects and herbivores so we do not see much herbivory of these plant also so it grows unabashed and uh, ligodium certain species of ligodium like ligodium palmatum it is getting endangered this is because of the fact that there is habitat loss most of the ligodium the ligodium palmatum which is um, uh, which is mostly found in the uh, southern uh, portion of america that is in the florida texas and on this region so here due to extensive um, use of land uh, for uh, settlement and agricultural activities uh there is habitat loss for this ligodium 
another thing is that this ligodium japonicum when uh, it becomes uh, when it it is grown in the um, under the greenhouse condition or if there is uh, um, there is a much uh, herbivory then it can sometime be infested with um, paxinia ligodi um, this uh, this fungus is a very opportunistic fungus it only affects li uh, those species uh, those plants of ligodium which are uh, not that much in uh, health so uh, Another thing is that this ligodium under very uh, low temperature condition they can perinate um, with their roots that is filled with starch root not root but rhizome filled with starch so rhizome becomes a perinating structure in uh, temperate region so this is the ecological importance economic importance so uh, ligodium many species of ligodium which has been introduced to a non native place as an ornamental plant there as this plants are they they are climbing for and they climb to great height so um, in those gardens where it is growing uh, uh, and it has reached great height on the top of the trees so uh, once the spores are liberated the air currents they carry the spores to far off places and so uh, once the uh, plant that were placed in a garden has now uh, uh, invaded many um, uh, surrounding as well as far off places also another reason is that for this weedy nature is that uh, the the secondary metabolites that are present um, they prevent uh, herbivory of these leaves and as a result they grow unchecked and also as these plants were introduced so uh, these plants do not uh, under native condition they these plants they have uh, their own specific leaf uh, borer or um, stem borer or leaf miner this type of insects but when placed in a non native environment this uh, specific predators are absent that is why they have this um, uh, high amount of uh, they become very invasive so uh, these plants that were introduced ligodium japonica microphyllum they have now invaded the plantation area as well as the uh, paddy field uh, area as a result they have caused huge economic losses so ligodium palmatum this has got very beautiful leaves and in fact is used in various type of uh, decorations also there are certain species of ligodium whose uh, stems are as because they are very strong they are used as ropes also they are used as a very rudimental mattresses uh, that is used tradi ethno traditionally uh, by uh, uh, by uh, people uh, local uh, native people of any re region the tribal people and also as because the leaves and the rhizome they had got a uh, medicinal property many medicinal property they have been ethnically used uh, in traditional medicine for example ligodium microphyllum ligodium flexiosum they have all got the pharmacological so uh, uh, from the very beginning i was uh, discussing about its invasivity so mechanical control of such an invasive weed is impossible because uh, it will become very cost effective and very time uh, it will become cost ineffective and time inefficient because uh, this they uh, they climb to great um, height and uh, their spores are um, they are um, they are uh, dispersed by wind current so they can reach uh, they can uh, travel to great distances and you we can't control the only mechanism is uh, biological a uh, chemical mechanism is also not that much um, uh, economical because we have to repeatedly apply the chemical um, uh, uh, for uh, its control and also that chemical may harm the other type of plants also other type of herbs also but on the other hand biological control is very specific where actually the plants 
uh, they are uh, fed by uh, specific type of insects and a uh, specific type of pathogen uh, infects that uh, plant those type of pathogen as well as insects are used in the biological control because uh, they are very specific to a particular species so mostly lepidopterans that is butterfly and the moths as well as mites as well as many other uh, stem boring and leaf mining uh, insects are found uh, that are specific to specific species of ligodium and of this uh, sometime the um, uh, in adult insect uh, feed the adult insect uh, feed on the leaves uh, sometime uh, the female they um, they feed on the leaf and uh, oviposite that is lay their egg on the leaf and the larva that comes out they uh, keep on eating the leaves so uh, this two type of uh, um, Uh, predation uh, in the two type of biological control and uh, one thing that is very important that after such amount of predation when the health of the plant is uh, weak so those uh, the predated leaves they fall uh, for the opportunistic fungal um, infection which means that those leaves that are Uh, that are already eaten and those um, those um, leaves they are the entry point for fungal infection and the plant gets infected so we see that biological control is very effective as it is twofold that is once using the insect and uh, naturally there is fungal so infection this was following the, end the, of the insect first part uh, of the video feed. i know it was a long video but i have included many um, uh, things together next part i will be discussing about the reproduction and life cycle cycle of ligodium i have made videos on other type of ferns like salvinia marsilia and uh, about the glycania uh, if you have any other um, fern in your mind uh, that you want me to uh, make videos on you can write it in the comment section and if you like this video do share it with your friends and also do subscribe because your subscription encourages me I have made videos about uh, the BSc and MSc syllabus in algae, fungi, bacteria, as well as lichen, cyanobacteria. You can go to my channel and watch those videos. Thanks again for watching this video.